Joining us now on the Emerald Key Casino Sportsbook Hotline, it's the ringer, Stephen Ruiz. And Stephen, we've asked you about this player before. So before we even get to anything about the Seahawks head coaching search or about the conference round of the playoffs, I have to ask you about Geno Smith's season because I'm telling you, while I am for keeping Geno here for another season and maybe letting a young quarterback learn behind him, I think that uh, a somewhat disappointing campaign really stoked a lot of doubt among fans. What did you think of his 2023? Uh, I, I thought he showed that the year before wasn't a fluke. Now the question is about his ceiling, like how far can he take this franchise? And I think the, those questions are legitimate. I would like to see him get to play behind a more consistent offensive line. That's something we haven't really gotten to see the last two years in the second half. Uh, when he was kept clean, he was one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. When he was under pressure, he was one of the worst. It's, it's kind of figuring out the right balance and getting an offensive line that can put him in those situations where he has been one of the better quarterbacks. Do you think the raise that he got uh, after the 2022 season contributed to maybe fans not uh, celebrating the year that he had quite like uh, what he did in 2022? Because obviously now he's making a lot more money than he did, and it's a much bigger investment on the Seahawks part. Yeah, I think it, it has to. And I think as a fan, you have the right to kind of expect more when a player's making more. Uh, I would have expected him to elevate his game a little more than he did. Uh some of that is the team around him. I think individually he was a better quarterback than he was a year before. I think he was more consistent. I think you could tell that he really benefited from having a year of film to watch in the off season. I think he was a better player. I think the, the, the players around him w were a little bit worse, which made him look a little worse. But uh, I think if he doesn't show that next step of evolution next year, then I think it, it makes a lot of sense to start looking for the next guy. I've got a tough question because we haven't seen Drew Locke as a starter since he was with Denver. And so I'm asking for a comparison that's going to be really, really hard to make. But, Stephen, so that you know, one of the most popular things we always see from listeners is why not Drew Locke? If him and Gino were the same, he's so much cheaper, he's younger. Um, how would you compare the two and, and what maybe is the gap that you see? Uh, I think there's a huge gap. I don't think they are the same. I think that's what happens when you see like two pocket passers get compared. We don't really have a lot of terms for mm -hmm. separating pocket passers. So we put them all in the same bucket, <laughs> but like, this is how I would explain it against pressure. Geno Smith steps up against pressure. Drew Locke steps back. And that pretty much sums up why he hasn't been a good NFL quarterback up to this point in his career. He hasn't got an opportunity to show it in the last couple of years, but when he did play this year, when he has played in preseason, when he did play in Denver, those those warts were all over his tape. Steven, I enjoy reading your, your quarterback rankings throughout the season. But uh, one ranking throughout the season, I don't know if it's a bit or, or what, but you always have had Brock Purdy down quite low in your rankings. Uh, how do you feel about him with the 49ers now in the NFC championship game, uh, especially because, you know, he didn't have a, an amazing game, so to speak against the Packers, but here they are once again, uh, playing for an NFC crown. Uh, yeah. How did you feel watching him that night? Did you feel like he was a top 15 quarterback? Yeah. Stay strong, I, I Steven. Did not. <laughs> uh, did, have you ever seen Patrick Mahomes or, or have you ever seen Geno Smith play a game that bad where it looks like he can't even throw a football? No, you haven't. And that's why he's not in the top 15 of my rankings. That's why he, until he shows the ability to play like a top 15 quarterback, then I'll give him that credit. I love it. Do you ever find it really frustrating? Because I think that like for Brock Purdy, I'm like, he's so blown past my own expectations of what he could do. But my expectations were based entirely on whether or not like I recognized his name and, right, like, yes. and him is obviously a uh, Mr. Irrelevant. Like if he was a number one overall pick, I'd be like, you know, so many other pieces on your team shouldn't be this much better than you. Um, and that's not a dig. San Francisco is a phenomenal team. I think, unfortunately, right. we're going to see them representing this conference in the Super Bowl, unfortunately for Seahawks fans, obviously. But do you find it really frustrating? Because I, I follow you on uh, Twitter, and so I see a lot of the interactions you have with this. Do you find it frustrating trying to defend your takes on quarterbacks when so many people, uh, I guess, see the entire team's performance as a reflection on a quarterback? Yeah, it gets kind of frustrating. It gets frustrating when I when I'm like deemed the Brock Purdy hater and like I say he sucks and there's no redeeming qualities. If you go on the quarterback rankings, I have strengths and weaknesses for every quarterback, and he has grades for every attribute you can want to check out for a quarterback. I just don't think he's one of the top ten quarterbacks. I didn't think he was an MVP candidate. I also don't think he's a bottom five quarterback. I don't think he's the worst quarterback in the world. I think he's fine. And the problem is, I think 
there's people on both ends of the spectrums, on both ends of the, the extremes of the spectrum, and those are the loudest people. You have the people that are like, oh, he's terrible and he shouldn't play. I get kind of bucketed into that group. And then there's the other end where the people are comparing him to Joe Montana when, I, like I just said, he couldn't throw a football for 58 minutes of that game. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I'd like to think I'm closer to the truth than maybe people that think <laughs> he's better than all. other people. <laughs> but we, uh, time will tell. Time will tell. That's what I always say. Just give it time. Like, we had the same conversations about Jimmy Garoppolo, and it's funny how those things turn out.